Welcome to the Tales of Success podcast, a show about Labradors and achieving training success. Welcome to the Tales of Success podcast with me, Vicky Sharp. And today I just want to talk to you about puppy nipping, puppy chewing and puppy biting. It can be pretty frustrating, but there's lots of things that we can do to minimize these issues and start to kind of get over those challenges of razor sharp teeth that like to be sunk into your arms at any opportunity. So during this episode, we're going to look into why puppies bite, nip and chew, how to prevent the behavior from escalating, the teething stages that you can expect to to go through with your Labrador. We're going to look at when teething finally stops, which I know you're all desperate to know about, and how to know if a problem is developing. I'm also going to give you loads of extra little tips and advice along the way to help you out. First of all, I just want to reassure you that chewing is a perfectly normal activity for young Labrador puppies. And to offer some reassurance to you, you probably don't have an aggressive dog. You just have a dog that has razor sharp teeth and is going through the usual puppy phase of finding out their new world and experimenting with everything. But I want to tell you about the reasons why your Labrador is probably doing so much biting, chewing and nipping in the early stages. So first up, we talk about exploration and puppies need to explore their new world. And they do that by using their mouth to learn about this, this new place that they're in. Dogs use their mouth just like human toddlers would use their hands to explore and experiment. Labradors simply want to know if they can play with it or if they can eat it. And using their mouth help them find out those answers. Our puppies will also chew, nip and bite more so when they are overtired and overstimulated. Puppies need a huge, huge amount of sleep. But if we leave them to their own devices, they simply don't sleep for as long as we would like them to. So as a general rule, give your dog an hour of free time of play and enjoyment and excitement. But then try and conclude that with an hour of peace, quiet, rest and relaxation. It'll allow them to not get overtired and overstimulated and just give them time to to recharge their batteries. Because if we don't do that, lots of Overstimulating or exciting play simply means that your dog loses the ability to self-regulate and then they start to become a little bit rough and a little bit over the top. So keep it calm and give them regular rest opportunities. Ask yourself as well, how painful is it when you get toothache? It's pretty painful, right? And we take painkillers, we put clove oil on our gums, we we chew things, we do anything we can to alleviate that pain. And when your pup is teething, they have that same discomfort, but multiplied by about 42. They can't take painkillers, so the only thing that they can do is chew. And chewing helps alleviate pain and tension in their very painful, uncomfortable mouths. Anxiety and nerves is also a big part of why dogs chew. Chewing along with licking and sniffing is used as a bit of a coping strategy by a lot of Labradors as it helps to calm and relax them. The first six months of your Labrador's life is going to be pretty stressful. There's going to be a lot of new things taking place. They've got a new house. They've got new people. They've left their mum. They've left their brothers and sisters. They've got a whole new universe to get used to. And sometimes they will get anxious. They're going to get a bit a bit stressed out. So chewing, licking and sniffing are the things that we can do to help them relax and and kind of just switch their brain off a bit. So give them chewing options um, just to keep them nice and calm. Also, pain is a huge part of why dogs will chew and bite. We've already spoken about teething and how painful that is, but pain can come from many different sources and there's lots of different causes for it. So even if your dog is suffering with a little bit of muscle strain in their back leg, you might start to notice that that shows itself in a chewing behavior because they're in discomfort, they're in pain. Again, they can't go and take painkillers, but what they can do is they can alleviate that frustration by chewing that gives them something to do to take their mind off it and next up we've got 
learned behavior and habits. So learned behavior, if your dog actually learns that biting gets attention, they're likely to do it more often. And they don't care whether that attention is good or bad for the most part. They just want you to give them some attention. So if your dog knows that chewing your foot gets you to get up and do something with them or move around, they're probably going to do it again because they know that it gets a certain response. And similar with habits, if we've allowed our dog to, to chew and to buy inappropriate things in the early puppy stages, they probably just think it's perfectly normal now and they will continue that behavior right through to their adult life. So even when the need to chew has gone because teething's done, They'll just think it's normal because we've allowed it to happen in the early stages. And last on our list of why your dog is likely to chew and bite is boredom. If you've got a Labrador that has nothing to do, they will get bored very quickly. And as much as they'd like to, they can't take themselves out for a walk. They can't go and meet their friends and they can't go and make themselves a sandwich to get over the boredom. But what they can do is they can chew your skirting board. And that's something that they might do just to keep themselves entertained with what they think is the best option for them at that time. So it's our job as their humans and their handlers to give them acceptable activities to do to prevent that boredom taking place. People often want to know how long this biting, nipping and chewing behavior can last. The bad news is, that it can take nine months for your dog to get a full set of adult teeth. And that means in that time, they are going to be teething to some extent. So they might be experiencing pain and discomfort, which means that you might experience biting, chewing and nipping throughout. Just bear in mind, though, the process of teething for your dog is extremely painful. As they grow their first baby teeth and then their adult teeth, they start to develop and the gums start hurting. All that's happening in the background before those teeth finally start to push through. So I'm going to give you a little rough guide of what to expect in the teething stages and when. So first part, naught to three months. When your puppy arrives with you at eight weeks, they are seriously cute. They're fluffy, they're totally innocent, but they are ready armed with the most amazing set of needle sharp teeth in their mouth and they are surprisingly painful. When your dog gets to three to eight months, this is what I call the dinosaur phase. And this is the stage that is really painful for your Labrador and can start to impact their general behavior, resulting in you as their human feeling like you have rehomed a absolutely possessed dinosaur. And then when we get to eight, nine months plus, all teething has probably been done by this point. It's often a little bit before with Labradors. And this is when your dinosaur starts to turn into a teenager and the fun really starts to begin. As I said earlier, chewing helps alleviate pain. So it is important that we give them lots of chew toys that are going to help with that feeling of discomfort because they can't take painkillers. So you know, let's give them some alternatives that do a similar kind of job and providing them with cold or frozen items will start to act as a good alternative because it numbs the painful area that they have in their mouth. Something like a large frozen food ice cube will keep them busy and cool them down in warm weather. And you can do that. Just take yourself like an old Tupperware container, fill it with bits of kibble, fruit, cheese, anything that your dog likes, any food-based item that they really like, and mix it all together, give them a nice variety in there, and really pack it full of, of treats and food in there, and then top it up with water, and then place the whole lot into the freezer, and leave it in there until it's totally frozen. Once you've got a frozen great big ice cube that is just full of treats and food, just give it to your dog, let them go to town on it, let them chew it, it will keep them busy for absolutely ages. It will cool the, the painful gums that they've got. And if it's a nice warm day, it's also a great thing just to, just to let them chew on, just to keep them nice and cool as well. The frozen 
theme continues because we can freeze loads of different stuff to to let them chew on frozen fruit frozen vegetables they will act as a natural healthy long-lasting chew you know it will allow them to really alleviate pressure in their mouth so you can freeze whole carrots you can freeze a whole cucumber you can freeze a whole banana the only thing i would avoid is berries because they're so small your dog probably won't chew them. They'll just try and swallow them whole and it could be a bit of a choking hazard. Alternatively, if we don't want to give them food all the time, you can take like an old T-shirt or an old tea towel and run it the water until it's wet and then wring it out so it's, um, it's not quite as damp and then start to tie it in lots of small knots. Be creative, make it a really funky shape and then freeze the whole thing. Just make sure that you use an old T-shirt or tea towel because once it's frozen, you're going to give it to your dog and you're going to allow them to chew it. If they're not that taken by a frozen tea towel, just drop a few little drops of um, dog-friendly stock or gravy, something like that. That will kind of incentivize them to have a good chew and that should keep them busy for a good amount of time. And on the theme of chews, there's lots of other things we can give to our Labradors as well. Anything that's animal derived is going to be popular. So that's anything that used to belong to another animal. Things like dehydrated beef skin, tendons, chicken feet, pig's ears, fish skins. They're all tasty, they're healthy and they're natural. Other natural ingredient chews that we recommend are things like yak chews, coffee and olive wood as well. We also want to make sure that we do give our puppies destruction opportunities that's really vital for them and it's the time where we we allocate them an opportunity to go wild and cause havoc so make sure we give them things that they can destroy like cardboard delivery boxes from amazon um cereal packets tissue boxes you know there's nothing wrong with letting them destroy those they will get a a sense of purpose when they're doing it and they get to to work those those teeth those gums and those mouths also, natural things, things that you might just have lying around the house, actually, like cricket bats, rounders bats, baseball bats. They're heavy, they're solid, and they start to replicate the things that your dog wants to chew, like table legs. Treat these items, the bats, as like a legal version and use it as a good alternative. Make sure you give them an ever-changing variety and choice. So... Give them something that will prevent the boredom and familiarity. We don't want it to be the same thing day in, day out. So change the toys around daily if you can and just limit them to a few toys at a time to keep it special. So on a Monday, you might have four toys out. On a Tuesday, you might just change them for a different four toys. So it's not like a sea of toys all the time. Keep them special. It just keeps it interesting and keeps your dog a little bit focused on the items that they have on that particular day make sure your choice of toys give lots of textures sizes shapes and colors it will give them the the variety that they need to see and to feel rope toys soft toys hard rubber or plastics wood bright colors and use things that have different sounds in as well i know that the squeak will drive you crazy but your dog will enjoy it. So have squeaky or noisy toys as well. When you're finding your chew toys for your puppy, there's also items that we would recommend you avoid. If you have an item that is really tough and really hard, it could be that your dog loves chewing it, of course. We want to give them things they like, but it might simply be too hard for them. Those razor sharp teeth are also quite delicate. And if they have something so hard, it might cause the teeth to, to splinter or to break, and that can cause problems. So avoid the really hard items where you can. The general rule of thumb here is if you can stick your fingernail into an item and leave an indentation, it's probably gonna be okay. If you can't make an indentation with your fingernail, it's likely to be too hard for your puppy to cope with, and it might lead to those broken teeth. We'd also avoid items that encourage chewing of personal items. And by that, I mean, you know, if you're really hung up that you definitely don't want your Labrador puppy to ever chew your shoes, and why would you? Um, 
you probably don't want to give them an old slipper as a chew toy because they will start to get a bit of familiarity with that item and they think that every shoe that they find is acceptable. We'd also recommend that you avoid chewing as part of human interaction. And that means that we limit the amount of rough play. And by rough play, I mean the rough play that really riles a dog up and gets them overexcited, encourages them to use their mouth to, to play. So we don't want to do play that encourages mouthing, particularly on hands. We also don't want to give items to our dogs that are likely to crack or splinter. Plastics are, are a prime example. If they, um, if they splinter, they go into small shards and they can be swallowed and cause damage internally. We definitely, definitely want to avoid rawhide chews. Rawhide are the things that you normally see at Christmas and they're lots of different colours and they're usually in a stocking or something like that. Almost bone shape, they're, they're not great. They are very hard to chew. Your dog can't digest them properly and there's been many horror stories of dogs like just inhaling these, these items and they get stuck in their stomach and then they have to have them surgically removed. So rawhide is not great. There's lots of natural alternatives like fish skin rolls are a good alternative, but steer clear of rawhide where you can. Highly processed and not digestible for your dog. And last on my list of things to avoid with chewing is avoid playing with your dog where your hands are near their mouth. So if you're giving them loads of fuss and attention and they're naturally wanting to use their mouth to interact with you, Always have an item between your fingertips and your dog's mouth. So use a cuddly toy as an example. Use that to interact with them. And it just means you've got this like safety buffer of an acceptable chew or an acceptable item that your dog can chew and they can bite. It's going to protect your hands and it won't allow them to create the habit of biting you. So to give you a little roundup of the key points to remember from this podcast, a well-rested and calm dog is generally a better behaved and nice dog to be around. So give them regular breaks from excitement, develop a reliable sleep and rest routine to give them downtime and time to relax. Accept that your puppy needs to chew to learn and explore their new world. Chewing, biting and nipping is simply a way to relieve pain for a lot of dogs. And the same behavior can get attention. So always make sure that you give your Labrador the correct response. And that means that you can start to prevent bad habits from developing. And finally, nothing is going to stop biting, nipping and chewing overnight. But if you give a consistent approach, it's gonna minimize it and bring it to a close much, much quicker. Thanks for joining us. We hope that has been useful to you. But from me, all I want to finish off by saying is be caring, be consistent and be your Labrador's best teacher. I'll catch you on the next episode.